I've been just watching this channel for about two weeks now. Like I'm salivating over this channel. I'm, I'm really hoping in the next day or so ahead of earnings. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Happy Monday. So this part of the game is called waiting to see who wins the game of chicken. So last week, uh, obviously a lot of technical damage, uh, especially from the Thursday uh, the Friday continuation from the Thursday session and left us in a you know, pretty steep hole going into the weekend. And the question was, well, when is this magical invasion uh, going to occur? Now, before I say that, I, I sound like I'm being sarcastic because it sounds like it's starting to be a sitcom. Um, you're, you're getting headlines left and right that Putin is going to announce on a certain day at what time. It, it feels like he's just messing with us. It really does. And I, and, and I hope I'm right at this. Usually I don't care if I'm right or wrong. But again, you're, you're dealing with people's lives here. And I, I think all these headlines are, are almost like political banter to see what, you know, what can he get away with without causing a, a ripple, right? And that's exactly what we're seeing here. And I feel like he's just, he's, he's just at the point that he's bored, right? He's riding around chair, you know, bare chested on his bear. He's drinking the vodka, the eating the borscht, the pierogies. And for some reason, that's just not enough for him. He feels he's starting to feel that COVID craze. And now he's trying to, well, you know, invade the Ukraine. And the problem with this is we're, we're getting a lot of headlines from something that you should really keep secretive. Like when was the last time that there was a military operation from any kind, from any country attacking another country or, or whatever the case may be, and they're announcing basically when it's gonna happen, right? You're starting hearing headlines, hey, I can't do it on Tuesday, right? But I'm gonna probably do it on Wednesday if that's good for you guys, right? After my massage, maybe my sauna. It's getting out of hand here. And, you know, between all the talks between uh, Washington and uh, Putin and all that stuff, it's really starting to be kind of a circle jerk. And I think a lot of traders are sitting here really sit starting to wonder. And I, I think just like me, is this really real? OK, is this really real? And, you know, I hope it's not. Uh, because again, all these headlines that are coming are just really out there. It's like almost why doesn't he just go on Instagram live? and be like, hey, you know, I have a special guest here, right? Maybe a musical performer, maybe just discuss it on Instagram Live, maybe do a poll if he should do it or not. So yeah, it's kind of getting wild and the market is really trading based on this headline. Is he gonna do it? Is he not gonna do it? You know, I think the, you know, the market gapped down over the weekend. Uh, you, had, you saw some pre-market weakness and then the market started rallying well because there was no invasion. And then you started seeing some headlines. Well, maybe we're gonna invade, maybe we won't. Maybe it could be Tuesday, maybe alternate Thursday. I don't know, maybe Valentine's Day, right? After, you know, maybe some Twitter after dark. I don't know how he's gonna feel. So it's up and down, up and down, up and down. And when you're in a head, headline driven market, it's not a bullish thing, right? Technical damage occurred. We already know uh, who had control of uh, kind of the price action going into today's day. But when you fuel that up with he said, she said, he said, he said, um, it really is starting to get you know, kind of a, a little bit on, on everybody's nerves. And the problem with this type of environment is, number one, it's not bullish. But number two, it could literally lead to something in case he is 100% certain. Now, you see these headlines, uh, they're around, they have their troops around uh, certain parts of the Ukraine. But then they're telling the United States Embassy, hey, you might want to go from the east side of the Ukraine to the west side. Well, what is that? If you're either, either leaving the country or not leaving the country. So there's a lot of headlines, a lot of moving parts. It's annoying as hell. And anybody who bought the market literally at that first move because there wasn't an invasion saw two hours later that everything got stuffed into supply. And then hours later, everything started to fade only for the futures uh, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ 100 to kind of be flat on the day. And going into tomorrow's session, I, I think we almost have to expect 
that as well, right? Uh, continue to uh, give the bears the benefit of the doubts because again, when we finally saw some areas of the market kind of get weak today, those are the areas that kind of got weaker. Anything that rallied today uh, only rallied to recover some losses that they had on Thursday and Friday. And when you saw stocks finally hit their supply, look exactly what happened, right? Tesla today was actually kind of strong here at the open. It was actually down all the way down to 833 pre-market, but ran into supply and it went red. Uh, Amazon at one point looked really, really good. And you're gonna see the same thing over and over again, ran into supply, right? Got faded. Uh, name like Facebook never rallied, okay? Never, never rallied, uh, went to the lows. VMW that I still like, and I think it goes lower, probably sees this 120, 121 area, never rallied. But again, it took out the previous day's low. And you started seeing a lot of names like that, one by one by one. They didn't have enough muster to go higher. They're recovering some uh, some losses from last week, but they weren't really going, you know, they really weren't feeling to get that really massive destruction sell off like we did last uh, Thursday and last Friday. But what it did happen at the end of the day was kind of a put in an inside day of last week's selling, uh, bought a little bit of time. And now the question is, well, where's the next headline and where's the next move down? For the for the bulls to, 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 to really seize any type of control, for me to get bullish right the, the word bullish we would have to at least engulf this whole candle from last week of the 360 uh area on the queues and i don't see that happening uh anytime soon considering we're 13 points uh, below the money i i still believe that, you know the value continues to be uh on the downside even if the names some of the names didn't follow through today and, and had complete destruction uh most of them again like i said before put in an inside candle right inside candle is if they didn't take out the highs, didn't take out the lows, is right in between uh, with a lot smaller volume. They're kind of buying time here. So, you know, to make a watch list uh, for tomorrow, to you know, try to look for some names that are very, very strong, you're going to have a lot of time finding that. Uh, but also on the flip side, and as much as, you know, I did definitely find, you know, find some names uh, that I definitely like to the short side tomorrow. And again, look at some names here like ISRG starting to roll over here. You have this whole big channel here. If it confirms lower, it could go lower. Uh, VeriSign, who's held this bottom channel now three separate times. You know, maybe a stone throws away from going lower as well. NVIDIA, uh, ahead of its earnings, they're coming out soon. But boy, oh boy, look at this channel, man. I've been just watching this channel for about two weeks now. Like, I'm salivating over this channel. I'm, I'm really hoping in the next day or so ahead of earnings. I do believe that they report on Wednesday. So if there's, if there's going to be any type of weakness, it's probably going to be tomorrow. So if there's no weakness for tomorrow, then... We're gonna have to kind of scrape the idea until they come out after earnings. But look at the you know look at the range here. That looks really good. You had uh, Xilinx who got kicked out of the Nasdaq 100, right? Had a big big candle down. Now it's right on support. If it confirms support, maybe it goes lower as well. So there's there's still good value to the downside. But the problem with today's kind of like rally sell off, rally sell off, rally sell off kind of rally, right? It put a lot of these names in the middle of the range. The only name that I kind of like to the upside just in case we rally tomorrow is uh, Chewy, right? You can see here a couple of times it bumped up against uh, the upper supply. But again, I'm not really counting to the upside uh, to get any uh, value. But the most important part with a day like this um, and a market like this, right? A, a, specifically a headline driven geopolitical, almost like war type um, uh, type of scenario, you're, you're going to be, you got, you're going to be literally uh, hamstrung because of every single headline. And the longer they prolong this without actually anything happening, I'm going to start to have my doubts more and more that this is real or just him playing, uh, playing bully for the rest of the world. So let's talk about today's session again. Uh, definitely sell side continues for tomorrow's uh, action. Um, you know, you, you had some names, you had some names moving lower. Uh, was it a destruction of equity prices? No, but again, stocks continue to go lower. Not everything, but stocks continue to go lower. They take out the previous channel and they just kind of drift. And that's exactly what we saw today. Uh, Lululemon 315, if it builds below, can flush. Again, not huge. Nothing's going to be huge. But here's Lululemon, uh, you know, took out the 315, traded down to like 310. Uh, still looks lower to me. Uh, VMW, uh, again, this is the longest trade ever, but you know, again, still looks lower. 124, if it builds below, can see 121 uh, in the 50 day. Um, I still like it. I think it still goes lower. Uh, not a big move, went down about a buck, but again, this whole candle here engulfed two weeks worth of selling. I still think uh, this thing sees 121, uh, 120, especially uh, if we continue to see weakness. Uh, AMAT, 
Uh, 131, if it builds below, can flush. Here's AMAT. Not a big move. Again, you, you can see the thing here. Not a big move. Went down like a dollar and a half, and then it bounced back like everything else. Uh, MU, uh, you know, MU got re you know got upgraded today. Um, small pop, and then it faded. Uh, 92 needs to build. Again, cash flow only. Anytime you're in a sell-side environment, it's only cash flow only. Traded up to like uh, 93 and change. Nothing big there as well. Uh, Affirm last week, they had that whole, we leaked our earnings accidentally um, intraday and it got hit. Uh, 45 of builds below can sell more. Here was Affirm, right? Here's Affirm, you know, traded down to uh, 43. I think it still goes lower. Uh, Apple, not a big move. Apple went down, uh, you know, here's Apple, not a big move. Uh, we're watching that 167 area, traded down to like 66 and change, nothing nothing magnificent there. Uh, Facebook, 218, 50, 218, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, Facebook got down to uh, last week's lows, uh, traded all the way down to uh, 215 before kind of reversing course. Uh, let's see here, Facebook, Apple, VMW, slow crawl. I'm still crawling uh, to the low, but at least it's going in the right direction. Yeah, here is definitely the big move uh, in the afternoon. Uh, Tesla for experienced traders only, uh, 886 if it builds below can flush. And you can see here, here are the levels that it kept on taking, taking over and over and over again. So 886 was the big number here. Uh, here is the 886, let me show you the 60 minute chart. Here's the whole 886 level, and the stock got just hit really hard. It actually, when uh, red right on the day, it traded all the way down to 859 before recovering. So te Tesla's been uh, a really, really good mover, um, you know, both long, short, but especially in the last few days uh, to the short side. I still believe if it goes sideways in the next couple of days and can't rally, it'll probably test the continuation pattern uh, that it triggered on Friday. So that's it. That's it. It's all about Putin, right? Putin, not Putin. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how long the market continues uh, to sit on every one of his words, see if they actually uh, release uh, any type of concrete news. And again, we'll, we'll take it day by day, trade by trade. Guys, have a great night. God bless. I'll see you all.